let's talk about the trapezoid rule. Uh, this, I always like to introduce this in a certain way. Basically, um, I let students come up with it. Um, and I'm going to describe how students always come up with a, a basic version of the trapezoid rule and then talk about why it would be called trapezoid rule and uh, some other versions of it. So the problem here, uh, let's start with the problem. Find the displacement of a car if the velocities are given as follows. And I've graphed a uh, rough graph of what the velocity function might look like based on this data. Okay, So the first thing we learn is um, rectangle methods. And so for example, we could do the left endpoint method. And that would mean to take um, a bunch of rectangles based on the left endpoint. So I take this inter interval from 0 to 10, I take the left endpoint, I match the height, and I get a rectangle like this. Then I match the left endpoint of the next, and the next, and these should look have the same width, I just was being kind of sloppy. Okay. Later on we'll see what happens without when they're not the same width. Okay. So each of them has width 10, which is convenient. And the interval from 0 to 10, we use height 10. Interval from 10 to 20, we use 18, and so on. And what we discover is that we never end up using the, that last data point of 35. We never end up using this height. Well, this is kind of suspicious. OK. All right, so that gives me a certain number. Let's go and evaluate that. It's 1140. OK. Oh, this is, uh, let's put units in to be more pr realistic. Let's say that's in seconds, and this is in meters. OK, uh, meters per second, rather. There we go. So this would be meters. OK, mm, that doesn't look good. Meters, there we go. Alrighty. So this is kind of suspicious that we didn't use that endpoint that, uh, end information. And then we also have the right endpoint method. OK. That would take rectangles like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And it's a very, very similar calculation. I'm even going to do a little copy and paste. We've seen this before. Hopefully, you have as well. You do include the 35, but you now ignore the 10. OK. And that gives us 1390 meters. OK. So most people at this point, when I ask, is there a better thing we can do, they, take, uh, they look at this and they say, why don't we just average the two? If we've got both of these, why don't we average the two? Especially since for lots of functions, like this function, for example, if it really is increasing, so let's assume this is an accurate picture. That's a big, a big if. But let's assume this is a reasonably accurate picture. The function is always increasing. Then the left end point is always going to um, undershoot, and the right end point is always going to overshoot. So the right answer is definitely in the middle. It's not necessarily exactly halfway in between, but it seems almost certain that w averaging the two would be a good idea. Okay. So the average, okay. So let's see what happens if we actually go back to the numbers and average. We still have a factor of 10 in between. Okay. And what are we getting? Okay. So um, we're going to take, well, let's just write it out. We have this whole thing plus this whole thing, oops, that's not really going to fit on the screen very well, is it? OK. All over 2. I'll make it a little, uh, make it a little bigger in just a sec here. OK. Well, that's wasted effort if I calculate it that way, because there's so much duplication here. So there's definitely a factor of 10, OK. And then, oh, I don't need parentheses there. OK. And then what have I got? I'm going to I took out the factor of 10. Now the 18 appears twice. And the 24 appears twice. And the 29 appears twice. And the 33 appears twice. What doesn't appear twice is just the very last endpoint that only was in one of the calculations and the very first one, which was only in one of the calculations. And then it's all over 2. Well, it's kind of silly to have a bunch of multiplied by 2s and then divide by 2s. So the way I would like to write it is I'd like to observe that it's all the interior points, all the interior heights, and then it's plus, and that's ooh, that's not over 2 anymore. Just kidding. Put it in parentheses. OK. So 2 times 18 over 2 just gives me 18, and then 24 and then 29. Notice this is really similar to the heart of the calculation that we had before. OK. This, the 18, 24, 29, 33 is what's in common here. And then 
all I'm doing is I'm adding the average of the first and last. This is not how you usually see the trapezoid rules um, written down, but it's, it's a good way. Okay, so here's the idea. We're going to take that delta x, because that's our name for that. Okay, and then we're going to take the sum of the interior points. I'm going to write this in equations in a second. Interior values of the function plus the average of the first and last. So basically, we're just counting, we are including the first and last values, but each with half strength. Okay, because if we counted both of them, that would actually almost certainly be an overestimate. But uh, because then we'd get more than n numbers. Notice this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. That still corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces. Okay, so yeah, let's see. I still need to expand that. Okay, so let me write that down in terms of sort of official language. Okay, let's write it down. Let's go over here for a second. And just remember the names here. We've got a is the left endpoint, and that's usually called x sub 0. And then x sub 1, and then x sub 2, and then x sub 3, x sub 4, up to x sub n, which is equal to b. Okay. So notice the 0 um, is a nice way to start this sequence so that this is a moved by 0 moves of delta x. This is uh, a moved by one move of delta x, two moves, etc. So what we see is that x sub k is just a plus k delta x, which is a familiar formula. Okay. So using that notation, what we're doing is we're taking all the interior ones, which is not the zero, and not the nth one. So we're going to go up to the n minus first one. That's all the interior ones. That's the 18 through 33 here, plus the average of f of a plus f of b over 2. And if you don't like using a and b, we could just call them x sub 0 and x sub n. But they really are just a and b. OK. So that's how I like to express the trapezoid rule. So this is, a, this is what's called the trapezoid rule. And we'll talk in the, the next video about why it's called that. Um, really important oops, that this is the case of equal spacing, where these rectangles, these subintervals, all have an equal width. And I want to talk, it's very important to talk about non-equal spacing pretty soon. Okay, But this is a good place to start it. When you have equal spacing and you just take the average of the left and right endpoint method, you automatically come up with this. And it's just a matter of doing the calculation a little more efficiently. Okay, Let me show you a slight variation of this. Oops. Trying to get the thing to work. Some people actually want to put it all over 2. And in fact, most books write it as all over 2. So if this is all over 2, then f of x naught that already had an, an over 2. And the f of xn already had an over 2. And then I have to make up for the fact that I'm dividing by 2 on these guys. So then I have a plus 2 f of x1 plus 2 f of x2 plus dot, 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 2 f of x sub n minus 1. So this looks a little weird. Like It's like we're double counting the interiors. Well, not really, because then we divide by 2. I like that's why I like this better. It says the interiors go just like they were before. There's nothing special about them. It's just that the left and right endpoints don't have quite as much bang for their buck. They don't have quite as much information about the function because they're hanging off the ends and we we discount them by a factor of 2. We give them half strength. But a nice way to think about that is we weight them equally, but we're just with a half to get an average, okay? Any way you like it, any of these three formulas are totally equivalent. Okay, and in the end, what are we going to get? If you happen to have already calculated the uh, the left and right endpoint methods, of course, then oops, sorry about that. We could just go back to here. The average is just going to be uh, 1140 plus 1390 all over two, and it's 1265 meters. That's a much better estimate, as it turns out, in many cases, than either of these guys to the true displacement over this time period. So I still haven't explained why is it called trapezoid rule? Where's trapezoids? Okay, that's going to be in the next video.